Hello beautiful people, this is Nick from Rain Room Productions and today I'm going to be sharing my top 10 tips for how to make your percussion and your drums sound better in your music production. This is something that I've been focusing on quite a lot recently. Drums and percussion are some of the hardest things to get right in your music production and they're some of the most important things in my opinion. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to share a couple of bonus tips at the end as well. So let's jump right into it. Tip number one, start with something simple. A big issue that I tend to have is that I like to overcomplicate things. It's really easy to sit down in front of the DAW and just stare and panic because you can't figure out what to write. So what I've been trying to do is take the pressure off, just start with something really basic. Anytime I've come up with something that I'm actually happy with, it's come from a session where I started with something simple. If you start with a simple hat loop and a snare or a kick and snare, it gives you enough space to sit and listen and wait to hear ideas come through instead of forcing ideas to come through. So I'm just gonna start with a little hi-hat loop. Okay, so since I'm creating a hi-hat loop, I'm gonna actually share with you my second tip right now, which is to use MIDI to create your hi-hats. So I'm gonna go ahead, I have a MIDI track here, and all I'm gonna do is double click on the hi-hat that I would like to use while having the MIDI track highlighted. It'll automatically import the sample into Simpler. I like using Simpler for my hi-hats. It gives you a little bit more control. So I automatically go from classic mode to slice mode because it allows me to fade in and fade out into the sample. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't like how long this hi-hat is, I wanna shorten it a little bit and then I'm gonna fade it out. And another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this velocity volume ratio up to somewhere around here, like 60, 70%, because now when I go in, I'm gonna create a MIDI track. So highlight, control, or command, shift, M. Basically now all I have to do is draw my hi-hat pattern in, And I realized that I actually want the, to the BPM to be around 140, just because that's the beat that I'm starting to hear in my head. There's a bunch of reasons why I like using MIDI for the hi-hats. For one reason, it's just so fast, because you literally just double click or you can hit B and just pencil them in. Another really big reason is because it's really easy to adjust the velocity. And so why you wanna do that is just to make it sound a little bit more human, gives it a little bit more groove, and all these little things you do will add up. Another reason is it's just super easy to adjust the pitch on the hi-hat. I actually don't like where it's sitting right now. So to me that just sounds better and it's giving me more ideas. I, just to keep it simple, I'm gonna put a snare on the two and the four right now. Okay, so easy enough, the snare on the two and the four. Okay, next I'm just gonna add in a basic kick. Sometimes I'll play the kick in with MIDI, but I don't have room on my desk right now for my keyboard. So I'm just gonna write it in audio form. So this is what it sounds like. One little thing that I like to do with my kicks, sometimes with other percussion, but a lot, I do this a lot with my kicks, is shorten and turn the volume down or the gain down on this little, it's almost like a ghost note, but it's still, it's still a note that's being played, but it gives it a little bit more groove rather than having it full length and going right into the next bar. That might be okay if you're trying to be more aggressive or something, I don't know, but for me, like this gives me a little bit more of a, a head bob. When I hear that, I'm hearing other things in between because it leaves space for more to happen inside this little eight bar loop here. Okay, so this is official tip number three. One thing that I really like to do, especially if I'm not feeling like I'm really all there with my production that day, is to use a live topper or just any, any topper. A topper is really a loop without any low end, so generally no kick drum or toms will be found in a topper. It's fun to make it your own if you have the time, but you can always just swing over to Splice and grab a few as well. This is a really great way to get new ideas. What I really like to do is chop them up or volume automate them um, just to try and make them your own so you're not totally just copying and pasting. So here's the topper that I'm choosing. So I will throw it in there and we'll see how it sounds.
So it's pretty straightforward, but it just adds a little bit of texture and I'm just gonna mess around with it here for a minute and um, we'll come back and just take a look and see how it sounds. Okay, so here's the beat that I have so far. Um, so I didn't do too much to it. I just chopped a couple things out and did a little bit of sound design and just kind of moved a few little things around. We'll take a listen and then I'll talk about a couple things that I did over here as well. So this would be kind of like my tip number four, adding variation uh, wherever you can, wherever it makes sense. Sometimes it's within two bars or four bars or going from the first four bars to the second four bars. Basically, anytime you can add variation is good. It'll make it more interesting. It keeps things from getting boring. So what I did was I took this rim shot from here and I brought it down. So basically, I just warped it and dragged it out. So if you hold shift and hover your mouse over the edge of the clip, you can drag it out. And normally what I do is hold shift and alt at the same time so that it takes me off the grid and I can just drag it to whatever position I want. So I had it here and then we're gonna double click on the clip and I like to use this texture warp. So basically all I did was play it around with the grain size. If you make the grain size bigger, you're gonna hear less fragments inside that warped sample. If I shorten it, you can hear that the fragments in the sampler are getting closer and closer together until it sounds like something completely different. So it just gives it a nice buzzy roll. So that I would call like a piece of ear candy and that kind of brings me over to tip number five which is to use live sample fills in this case i still kind of jimmied it a little bit to make a fill at the end of this eight bar loop but what i'll do here is i'll bring up another track and i'll show you uh, a good example of where i've used sample fills so i'm going to pull up this other track and we'll come back to this one in a sec i like using sample fills for the same reason that i like to use toppers they're easy to just grab and throw it in there do a little bit of eq and compression and bob is your uncle you have a nice fill so i'll just show you the intro of this track and hopefully you made it this far in the video obviously if you're still watching you did so maybe just throw me a like and a subscribe i would really appreciate it but anyways take a listen to this this is using sample fills in action here <laughs> sample fills there and then there's one there right before the little drop um, the idea here is to just make it easier on yourself and same as the toppers in that they add another element of like dimension to your track and can really give it an interesting and natural feel that is using sample fills okay so the next quick little tip that i have for you for production is throwing a delay or an echo on my hi-hats just to create a double time feel so i really love using um echo boy by sound toys highly recommend if you ever have a bunch of money to throw at some plugins this plugin bundle is really nice so yeah we're gonna throw it on there it has an eighth note delay by default we're gonna leave the mix where it is but we're gonna turn the feedback all the way down to minimum so that way it's only repeating once on the eighth note. And the nice thing about this Echo Boy plugin is that you have these different echo types. So cheap tape's gonna sound slightly different than space. Or plex or 
memory. Um, I like the space one. And the nice thing about this is you can EQ it a little bit, write it on the spot. And the other thing is that you can also um, adjust the input or output and add saturation. And I always like to add a little saturation. So that's with. That's without. And I actually like this little beat better with the double time in this instance. So I'm going to leave it on. Okay, so tip number seven. So next we're gonna move on to more of a like mixing mindset. Oftentimes as producers, especially now as like bedroom producers, we are producing and mixing at the same time. So one thing that I really like to do is group processing. So what this means essentially is that I have grouped all these tracks together, my percussion tracks, I highlight them and control or command G will group them together like this. We're just gonna rename it perks. And so when you're group processing, essentially what you're doing is you're processing all the tracks the exact same way at the exact same time. So this basically gives your tracks a glued together effect and makes them sound like they're playing together in the same space, essentially. And what you can do with this is you can do group compression, group effects, group EQ, anything that you want to affect the whole group you will apply in this group folder. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab Ableton's glue compressor and this is kind of what it's meant for what this compressor kind of does is it has a slower attack and release so it's not as noticeable as like the regular Ableton compressor. So I'm going to throw this on here. It's really subtle. I can make it more obvious. So you can hear all of the tracks are being processed the same way. But what I actually want to do is adjust the threshold down until it's just touching it or maybe a little bit more depending on how much processing you want on the group. So I'm going to do that. If you have good headphones on, you can kind of hear what's happening here. So it's reacting more to the kick just because the kick is the loudest thing. It like takes up the most headroom. So this compressor is reacting mostly to the kick and to any really transient things. So this is with it on and this is with it off. And if you find that it's taken too much volume down, you can just add some makeup gain. So it did take down a little bit. And so that is essentially group processing. And just remember you can, you can use any effect or tool on the group to affect the whole group. So tip number eight, we're going to be talking about parallel processing. So this can be used with many different effects. Most often it's used with reverbs and delays, but can be interesting with some distortion as well. In this case, we're going to use reverb. So there's two different ways in Ableton that you can do parallel processing. One way you can use parallel processing in Ableton is by using a send track. A send track will hold the effect on the track itself and it only outputs the processed signal. So if I crank up the send on this percussion track for the reverb, if I solo the reverb, you can only hear the reverb signal. That's one way to process in parallel in Ableton. The other way is you can actually just build the parallel processing right inside the track here. So what I'm gonna do is just for simplicity's sake is get Ableton's reverb. And what you're gonna do is click to highlight the reverb, command or control G to group it within this track here. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is click this show hide chain list to open up the chain. And then I'm gonna right click create chain. And so now essentially this is the dry signal and this is the reverb or the wet signal. Now, if I solo this here, we're only gonna hear the dry.
And if I solo that one, we're only gonna hear the wet. And what you wanna do with this, generally rule of thumb is to have the effect all the way 100% wet. You're gonna use this volume for the wet signal as essentially your dry wet knob. So basically, if I want more effect, I'm just gonna turn up the volume of that parallel chain. Unless I'm going for a certain effect, I'm just adding a little bit just to give it some space. And tip number nine is going to be just adding saturation to either individual tracks or to the whole group. So in this case, I'm just gonna add it to the group and we'll see what it sounds like. So this is with the saturator off. And this is with it on. Essentially what's happening here is the kick takes up the most space, so it's being affected the most, especially because it's got a lot of low end. It's, it's actually getting clipped and it's adding a, a bunch of upper harmonics. So that's kind of what you're hearing with the distortion there. And this is a double win actually, because what's happening here is that we're creating headroom because this is clipping the samples. You might not want to have that effect on the kick, but you still might want to save some headroom. So what you can do is we can just take the saturator off the group, the whole percussion group, and we'll get to my tip number 10, which is to organize your tracks. So in this case, I'm actually gonna group the hi-hat and this percussion loop together. And so I'll group the kick, and this is kind of like fills slash ear candy. I might want to process them separately, but in this case, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to process them together. And then the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to move the fills up in between the kicks and the snares. I want the kick at the bottom because I'm going to group all these together. And this one we're going to rename. And by the way, rename is control R when you're highlighted over a group or a track. And we're going to rename this one sat for saturation and then i'm only going to saturate this group so it's excluding the kick and then we're not going to get that buzzy 808 kick sound i'm going to throw the saturator on this group and we're going to adjust it to our liking so i'm just going to play it and adjust the settings as i listen i'm pushing the drive up but turning the output down so it's bringing out some things that you might not have heard in the first place so let's play it Basically just gives it a little bit more body, a little bit more character, and adds some upper harmonics. The nice thing about Ableton Saturator is that you have these effects on the bottom that you can play around with as well. So I would just mess around with them and see if you find something that you like. So yeah, it can get pretty crunchy. Obviously you're messing with distortion and saturation, but this is another thing that you can play around with. And again, it's saving you headroom so you can hear if you're wearing headphones it kind of evened things out a little bit so there's not as much dynamic range but what it actually did is that it it's it's saving you headroom just because it's essentially it's clipping the sound so if you see we're at minus 13.1 with the saturator on if i turn it off yeah we're getting up to minus 1.19 so that is a lot closer to zero than negative 13.1. Okay, so those are my top 10 tips um, for producing more interesting and better beats or percussion and drums. And I'm just gonna share a couple of bonus tips that I tend to use in most of my tracks for my percussion. One thing that I tend to do is I like to reverse my snare into itself. So we got this new snare in. And basically you can do this two different ways. Like you can just copy and paste this over and reverse it. Or what I like to do is create a new track and you're gonna click control drag to copy and paste it down, reverse it in. It doesn't really matter if they line up. I'm gonna cut it off here and I'm gonna fade it in and I'm gonna turn this one down a little bit. And I'm actually gonna shorten it a bit more. And then I, what I did was I just gave it a little gap because I want to be able to hear the transient really clearly on the snare still. So now we have this. 
just adds a slight variation. Most people wouldn't even notice it, but if you obviously sit and listen to it, you can tell that something's a little bit different. Uh, my next quick little tip actually was going to be to layer samples together. So kind of already did this here. Um, so maybe I like the tail of this one and I like the transient of this guy here. So in that case, I could just cut this off here and fade the transient off of the top sample and just keep the transient of the, the bottom sample. So now I'm not gonna, I'm only gonna have this short, tiny little, just a little bit of the snare and a little bit of the body. And then this one I have mostly tail. So I'm gonna replace all these all the way across and now i have them stacked and now we have this whereas before we just had we just had this So basically all I'm trying to do with my percussion at any given time is add depth or texture in any way that I can and any kind of variation wherever it could fit. One other little bonus tip is just to add texture layers, I like to call them, or you can just call it like ambience. I don't know why I include this in my percussion, but for whatever reason, it just kind of fits in with it. I'll throw in like anything from like bird sounds to just crackle on a vinyl or fire. So I'll just throw in a vinyl crackle just so you can hear. So here it is with the vinyl crackle. Here it is without. Um, one thing that I did just kind of forget to mention is actually just panning, such a basic concept. Um, but that's just another pretty obvious, but sometimes just overlooked tip is just panning and volume, um, just, just to give it some more space and depth. So like sometimes I might I might just pan the hi-hat off to the left a little bit. Maybe I'll pan this top loop off even a little bit further, or I might pan it off to the right. I might pan the snare off just slightly. Maybe the main snare, I'll pan it like just off to the left. And then I'll pan the fills off just a bit to the right as well. Uh, other than that, I don't have too much more to add. Um, just a few parting words maybe would just be like, it definitely takes a lot of practice and a lot of trial and error. Just try to keep those things in mind and just keep producing every day and things will come along and you'll just keep getting better and better. It's really easy to be hard on yourself when you're doing this stuff because all you see is people on social media absolutely killing it and you just wanna be where those people are, but it just takes time. And that's something that I'm working on as well. So let's work on it together. Comment if you have any questions, please like and subscribe. It really means a lot. It's so cool to see certain videos doing well and people following along the journey. So, so we'll see you in the next video and I hope you have a good day. Peace, peace, peace out, peace.